Hi, this is Mark Spencer from Ripple Training, and this is a quick tutorial on how to use the Connect the Dots callout to create an animated trajectory on a map. So here we are in Final Cut Pro 10, and I have a clip of a map in the timeline. By default, when you add a clip to the timeline that doesn't match the size of your project, it automatically is scaled down to fit. In fact, if we look in the video inspector and we scroll down, the spatial conform by default is set to fit. That's fine, but I actually want to make this fill the screen. So I'm going to click here to enable the transform effect. Then I'm going to drag one of these handles to make the map larger. And then I'm going to move it down and over a little bit. My goal here is to animate a line to go from Yankton to Sioux Falls and over to Spencer. So I want to sort of position everything about where we want it to be, right about there. Uh, if we wanted to further manipulate it, we could also use the scale parameter over in the inspector and the position controls, as well as dragging in the viewer. Let's click once again to get out of the transform effect, and let's add our call out. With this clip selected, I'm going to hit the letter X, which will mark the clip. You can tell by the little extra handles on the end. And now in the titles browser, I have the ripple callout selected. I'll select connect the dots and press the letter Q to perform a connect edit. And by default, we get this little animated line right here. So let's change it to line it up. Now, what we want to do is have point A be at Yankton and point B be at Sioux Falls. By default, if we drag these guys over and position them, we can certainly position the endpoints, but we might not get quite the curve that we want. In this case, I really want a straight line. And you can find it can be difficult to make a straight line if you do it this way, if you take this approach. So I want to show you a little different approach if you want to keep the line straight between two points. And the trick here is, is first I'm going to reset this. So in the title inspector, for the connect the dots, I'm going to click the hooked arrow for the published parameters. I'm going to hit it once, and I'm going to hit it twice to completely reset this callout. Now, instead of moving these endpoints first, what I'll start with is by rotating the whole thing. So I'll use this little rotation handle and rotate the line so that it roughly lines up with uh, the path that we want. And now I can't see the ends anymore, so I'm going to press Command minus twice to zoom out a little bit. Now we can see little on-screen controls, and I'll place this first point on Yankton and the second point on Sioux Falls. Now I'll press Shift-Z to fit the canvas back to the window. Now we still have a curve, but because we rotated it first, we can straighten that curve out. I'm just going to drag straight up on this on-screen control, and we end up with a nice straight line between the points. If I hit the forward slash key now to play that, We've got a nice animated line between those two points. So now I basically want to do the same thing again to go from Sioux Falls over to Spencer. And before I do, I don't really need these point A and point B descriptors. I could leave them on here and, of course, change the text and uh, do different things with the text, format the text, but I'm actually not even going to use that. So over in the title inspector, I'm going to scroll down and find show point A text and turn that off and show point B text and turn that off. Okay, so this animates on stops there. So let's this have this point be where we want the next one to come on. I'm going to tap I to set a, a range in point. And then I'm going to move to the end of this clip. I'm going to move back one frame and tap O for a range out point. Select connect the dots again and press Q for our second copy. Now this one's already pretty straight across, so Let's see if we can just line it up. I'll put point A right here, point B on Spencer, and then we should be able to make that a pretty straight line. There we go. Now, in this case, we don't really want to see this point A be animated on again necessarily. We could. Let's see what that looks like. We go from the first to the second, and then from the second to third. That actually might work OK to have it uh, animate on once again. It's your choice. What you can do is actually turn that whole point off so we don't see that animation happen again right there. So let's go back to the inspector here and let's turn off the text once again so we don't need it here. And then we could also turn point A off and you'll see it disappears and then this line appears on top. 
We'll go back to the timeline and just drag this title below the first one, and that'll hide that beginning point. Now if we play that back, we go from Yankton to Sioux Falls, and then a line straight comes out to Spencer. So you can really choose how you want that to look. I'm going to leave it that way. Okay, we have our basic uh, animation in place. Let's change the formatting a little bit. I'll select the first one, and let's make this match uh, our map a little bit more. First of all, for the line color, let's make it more of a, a deep brown and come close to matching the brown on the background. In fact, we, maybe we want it to stick out a little bit. Let's make it black so it's a little more clear that it's different than these other lines on the map. And then for the points, for the point A fill, let's fill that with a brown color. And then let's make the outline white and maybe a little thicker. And maybe make the whole dot a little larger. I've got 139% there. And let's match those for point B. So one trick for matching colors is here I've got the point A fill color. Down here I've got the point B fill color. I want them to match, so I'm just going to drag this color swatch down onto this color swatch. And they match automatically, which is kind of neat. I'll do the same thing with the white. Then I will change the width to match, which was 8 for the outline width. And the scale we set at 139. So we'll set that to 139. So they match nicely there. And then finally, let's change this. Instead of it being a line type of solid, let's make it a line type of dots. And by the way, it's a good idea to make this change last when you're changing a solid line to dots or to dashes. And the reason for that is once you make that change, uh, it won't automatically update as you move things around. See how the dots don't move? Uh, they will move if you then move in the timeline to update, but by default they don't move until you uh, move the playhead in the timeline. Okay, we've got that guy set up. Let's do the same thing with our next line, our second line. We'll make the line color uh, be black. And then if we wanted to match this brown color, I don't have that available here, but here's a little trick. I'm going to go back to the first one, and I'm going to click on that brown color swatch, which brings up the color picker. And by default, if this little window is uh, closed like this, you can drag it down and you can store colors here. So here's the color that, uh, that we used. I'm going to drag it from here down below so that it's available anywhere else I need it. So now let's close that, go back to the second line, click the red that we want to change. Actually, I don't care about that one. That's point A. Let's go to point B and click that one. And now I can select that brown color and I know it's going to match exactly. And the other was white. That's easy. The scale was 139. And I believe the outline width was 8. Then finally, let's go up and change the line type to dots. And take a look at that. There we go. What I might want to do is also change the line width so these dots are a little bigger. Let's go something more like 32 for both of these, line width of 32, so they match. A little more obvious. The other thing we could do is if we go down near the bottom, there's a shadow opacity and shadow distance. If we crank up the shadow distance, we can have this thing look like more like it's kind of floating above the map. So let's move the shadow distance to about 15 for that one. I'll select the other title and also set the shadow distance to 15 so that they match. Uh, you can go a little further. I don't think I will here, but just to show you, you can add extrusion or indent. So indent will give this a little different look. I don't think it works here. Uh, extrude will give some thickness that you can adjust to this little maps. But again, I think I'll leave it where it is. Now, the final thing I want to do is create a little camera move on this to add a little more visual interest. So while the animation is unfolding, we have a camera move that's happening. And in order to do that, I'm going to take this clip and the two callout titles on top of it and put them all into their own compound clip by grouping them. So I'm going to select all three, go to the File menu, and choose New Compound Clip, or you can press Option G. And that places them all in their own new clip. Now the cool thing about that is we can animate this thing all together. So I'll move my playhead to the beginning, and over in the video inspector, I'm going to set keyframes for position, rotation, and scale. Then I'm going to move forward to the point where this last one comes on, right about there. And at this point, I'm going to do a few things. Let's scale things up. 
Let's move them over and down to focus a little more on our target destination here. And we can even add a little rotation. We want to make sure we don't show the edge of the screen here. So let's add a little rotation, but also scale things up more. Something like that. And let's play that through. So now we've got something with a little more visual interest that uh, unfolds a little camera motion as the map draws on, which is really quite nice. So that's a quick way to create an animated map effect using Final Cut Pro 10 and callouts from Apple Training. I'm Mark Spencer. Thanks for watching.